Hey, Keith, this is uh, Jonathan. Uh, hopefully you have a quick minute to answer a few uh, short questions about the diesel community. Yeah, sure. All right. Um, so uh, what made you get a diesel truck and not a regular gas truck? Um, first of all, the uh, benefits in torque. Um, it's just the turbo diesels have a lot more power when it comes to pulling. And mm -hmm. um, other than that, the uh, street tuning capability and, of course, um, overall fuel efficiency is better as well. All right. So, yeah, let's uh, let's talk about the, the tuning. So uh, is your truck tuned or not? Um, so mine is actually uh, on a stock ECU right now. But I was looking into uh, getting a tune for it. Um, so from what I understand, it gives uh, significant power gains. Yeah, could you just tell, like, the people that don't know what a tune is? Can you explain it a little bit more? Um, yeah. Um, a tune basically um, alters the ECU to, you know, uh, change air fuel ratios or um, in turbo diesels how much boost you're putting out. Mm -hmm. um, so it can, it can do a variety of things, um, you know, just improving the performance or fuel efficiency or uh, pulling capacity of the vehicle. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, then uh, do you also want to tell the audience what kind of truck you got? Yeah. Um, I have a 2008 F-250. That's a 6.4 power stroke. And, uh, it's King Ranch. It's just a bit of a project right now. Uh, well, maybe you get a Power Stroke rather than a Cummins or Duramax. Um, so the Power Stroke was the most cost efficient. Um, 6.4 is a great motor, you know, with the twin turbo. But uh, the initial reason I got it is because, uh, you know, Cummins um, are a little more expensive and uh, typically have problems with the transmissions a lot of times. And I just wanted something, uh, you know, reliable and fun. And the Deer Max is a great truck, but uh, they're simply priced pretty high. So I, the Power Stroke was the best uh, bang for the buck, in my opinion. Okay. Okay. And uh, is the truck currently straight piped? Um, no, it's not. It's not straight piped. And you, could you tell the audience what it means to be straight piped? Yeah, that's going to be just an exhaust system going straight from the uh, engine back with no uh, resonators or catalytic converters, um, sometimes moving these are particular filters, um, increasing the uh, airflow, back pressure, making it louder, and giving you more clouds, really. What do, yeah, you, think, uh, what do you think we have? Do you think we have a bad reputation about rolling coal? Um, I, I think that there's a misunderstanding with that. Um, it's the same thing with every scenario. There's going to be individuals in the community who, of course, um, you know, do stuff unnecessarily. But uh, in reality, I mean, the emissions are not much more than your average vehicle. I mean, there's vehicles getting absolutely terrible gas mileage and stuff like that. Um, and rolling coal really is not big of a deal. But in reality, not many people do it. It's just there's certain individuals who make a bad name for the whole community. Okay. And then uh, can you also explain what rolling coal is, or just coal in general? Um, yeah, so that's just going to be um, unburnt diesel fuel, from what I understand. It's going to be basically just, like, black fuel coming out of the exhaust. So mm -hmm. uh, what does a turbo do, and what does it need to spool? Uh, so turbo basically um, will take air. Um, and recycle it from the exhaust manifold spinning a turbine. Uh, the turbo will then collect this air from the outside, which would be the clean air, and the spinning of the turbine powers an intercooler. The intercooler uh, makes the wheels, or makes the air cooler, and cooler air is inherently more efficient air. Um, so the cooler the air, the more power. So the turbo basically is just putting more air into the engine and is giving you more, more power. Okay. So uh, why do uh, many diesel trucks have gauges, and what do they do? Uh, so you can have many gauges. Uh, most common, I would assume, would be the turbo gauges. Of course, it shows how much pressure, uh, how much boost pressure you're putting, which would be uh, pounds per square inch or PSI um, on the turbo. Now, uh, diesels 
particularly have higher pressure rates, um, not only in the engine compression, but how much pressure the boost is pushing. Um, on average, like just a stock truck can go up to 40 pounds of boost and modified can even go higher than that. So a stock boost gauge is always important to have. And if you don't have one, it's good to put an aftermarket gauge. Uh, secondly, you can also have, you know, oil pressure gauges, transmission temperature, um, to make sure you're not burning out anything or overheating anything, causing uh, unnecessary wear and tear on your vehicle. Okay. Yeah, sure. Uh, do you think you fit in this, a typical stereotype of a diesel owner? Um, not at all. Uh, in fact, many individuals are surprised when, um, you know, I'm driving in the vehicle. But I think that stereotypes uh, should not be applied to something like that because, I mean, the vehicles are fantastic, and I think they can be for everybody uh, when used for the right purposes. <clears throat> What's the difference between having a stack and a side exhaust? Uh, so side exhaust or, you know, like a typical bottom exhaust will go from the bottom of the vehicle out, um, and that can be cut at multiple places, like we spoke of before, you know, having a, a straight pipe and or a catted exhaust or a cat back exhaust. Now, a stack um, will actually be a pipe going up the truck, typically, you know, resting on the bed or kind of towards the back end, facing up, putting uh, this exhaust pressure upwards and kind of blowing smoke in the air or pressure towards the air. Do you think uh, those owners do that to be obnoxious or just to, for the looks of it, for cosmetic looks? Um, I think they do it for cosmetic looks. Um, many could make the argument otherwise, but I've never seen it that way. Um, stacks simply just kind of give it a different look, makes your truck unique. And so um, I think that's the most important thing is everybody wants to have their truck unique. Okay, yeah. Definitely, definitely have to be different from the crowd. Um, and uh, is your truck currently deleted? And then also explain what deleted means. Uh, so a delete, uh, actually, um, what, what kind of delete are we talking about over here? Like a DPF delete or a, a cat delete or? Uh, like a EGR delete. EGR delete, okay. Uh, so mine is actually currently stock. Like I said, I picked it up recently. It's more of a project truck, but I've had a truck in the past that were deleted. Um, and a delete basically just, again, improves the airflow with the exhaust. Um, with these kinds of deletes, you're just getting, again, uh, more back pressure, uh, more airflow, and you're just increasing the performance of your vehicle, um, which can also be for, you know, towing capabilities to get more torque, for street capabilities to get more horsepower, uh, there's many uses to that. And uh, it also actually improves, improves fuel efficiency, uh, especially in the power strokes. Um, you can get um, almost um, 80% increase practically with um, the certain deletes, such as like the EGR delete. Uh, your fuel efficiency does go up significantly. Okay. Uh, what does it mean to be leveled or lifted? And are you currently uh, so leveled or lifted? Uh, so the truck is actually on a leveling kit right now. Uh, thanks for asking. And basically, a leveling kit will um, raise one end of the suspension, basically to match the other, um, kind of just giving it like a little bit of a lift, but not too much to maintain like that factory look. But it's a it's, it's a little bit of a lift. It just provides more ground clearance, of course, and then a lift, um, which is extremely popular in the truck community, will uh, put in larger springs. Um, sometimes even performance shock absorbers in the vehicle. Um, and this just raises the height of the vehicle, of course, giving it more clearance. Um, and there's many different types of lifts, you know, going from, you know, a couple inches to significant lifts to where you can walk under the vehicle and um, everything in between. Uh, yeah, I, I currently have a five inch lift on Mars, on my Cummins. Um, why do you think and in the truck community, we say 35, 75s, and 40s and instead of saying the whole size. Um, because typically, so this is, this is the, uh, I believe it's called the metric tire size. Is, so it's, you know, typically you have three digits, you know, going with the width, the um, height of the tire, and then the rim size. But uh, when it comes to truck tires, they're at such a large size that it's going by the metric sizes. 
Um, so, I mean, anything, you know, in the 30s is just the large tire. And um, the bigger it is, um, typically the more aggressive of a tire it is and the larger of a tire it is, of course. So by giving these, like, single-digit numbers, um, it's practical for these individuals just to have this, you know, tire size. Alongside the fact that they have different size, size rims, so by just giving the number of the tire, it's not taking into account the size of the rim. It's just the size of the tire. Which also goes back to the question about what it means to be stand. Okay, yeah. Um, so stancing is... Um, you know, again, very common in any car community. Uh, for trucks, uh, stancing can actually mean a variety of things. Um, individuals can put in wheel spacers to bring out their wheel gaps and kind of have more emphasis on their tires. There is, of course, lift kits that we talked about. There is even lowering kits. Um, stancing your vehicle can include, you know, uh, wider flares, different tires, different wheels, um, alongside the suspension so there's many extra factors available in dancing and i think it's a really commonly used um, modification style in the truck community and for the audience that would be interested in getting a diesel truck what would you recommend them and why um so starting off with their budget um the budget is not a factor i would start off by recommending a duramax um, the Allison transmissions used in the Deer Maxes are known to be the best transmissions available. And these provide for, you know, the best shifting, the best towing capabilities, and the longest durability. Um, beyond that, the Deer Max engines are extremely strong and extremely powerful. And the stock engines can hold a lot more pressure, allowing you to build these engines even stronger. So, in my opinion, Duramax is, is the number one truck you can get, but as I've said before, they are also the most expensive. And the second I would recommend uh, would be a Power Stroke, um, but it has to be before certain eras. Now, the 6.0 era in the Power Stroke, which um, was past 2003 and up to about 2006, uh, is known as the failure of Power Stroke almost. Um, it was one of the last engines made by International for Power Stroke. And they are absolutely nightmares when it comes down to it. Uh, individuals spend thousands and thousands of dollars just keeping these things running. Now, one thing can be said about these is they have perfected the engine with the bulletproof kit. Now, with this installed, which is almost a $6,000 investment, your engine has become significantly stronger. But that is on top of the investment of a truck already. Um, so if you were getting uh, the option of a power stroke, after 2003 and before about 2010, when they switched to six seven, I would recommend getting a Cummins. Cummins throughout all years have been strong engines, um, and they are in fact six cylinder engines for the most part, uh, straight sixes. Uh, and about before 2007, the transmissions were slightly weaker, but after that, were significantly improved uh, with crazy shift times and inc incredibly reliable engines. So overall, it depends on what you're looking for and what your budget is. So, and that's, and that's my description. Could it, can you tell us more about why we say five nine, six seven, and then also can you talk about why the Cummins isn't in my six or a straight six for those people that don't know or what it means. Definitely. So Jeff, uh, starting off with the numbers five nine, six seven, six zero, oh, seven three. Uh, all these are six six. Yeah, exactly. All these are uh, just the displacement of the engine. So, how many liters the engine in engine is would be a uh, more practical term. Um, and that also just describes how big the engine is. Um, back in the day, we used to describe engines in cubic feet. Like you know, we had four hundred four, five hundred five, stuff like that. But now mm -hmm. we describe it by the displacement, which is how many liters. So. Uh, like you said, 5.9, commonly, uh, super common Dodge engine, the Cummins. 6.7, 6.0, very famous Ford engines. And the 6.6 you spoke of, it's a famous Duramax engine. And yeah. all these are uh, in the community, people know these. I mean, if I say a 5.9, people know I'm talking about a Dodge. So these are just, you know, easy numbers used that we can throw around. And, uh, sorry, could you repeat your other question for me? Also, can you explain to the audience what it means to be 
what, what what's a V eight in line six for the oh, people yes, that don't of course. know? Sure. So um as you said, you know, the number six, the number's eight. We even have eco diesels now, uh, which can be down to four cylinders. You and talk the about number, those. <laughs> uh, well they are uh quite the engines. Good gas mileage but not good performance. Um, so these numbers sim- simply just say how many cylinders the engine is. Uh, the cylinder is, you know, how fast you can burn fuel at. Um, gas engines are common in the um, forms of four, six, and eight-cylinder engines, with, of course, exceptions of 10-cylinders, 16-cylinders, and all around. But diesels particularly stick to two main engines. Uh, the Dodge or Cummins brand mm-hmm. typically sticks with inline six or I-6 engines, and these provide more torque. With the engine being in line, uh, the way that they can inject the fuel provides just a maximum availability of torque and also can provide better gas mileage since it is a lower number of cylinders. And the V8 construction is just as it's described, eight cylinders in the form of a V, one going down and the other going up in the form of a V, um, this is a extremely commonly used platform uh, used in a majority of all other diesel trucks, including the Power Stroke and Duramax variety. Um, so V8 would be the most common, and the I6 being Cummins' uh, main use. Okay, I think that's going to wrap it up, man. Uh, thanks for your time. All right, thank you. Uh, don't roll too much coal on the way home. See you later, John. <laughs> Wait,